So we're at Trade Tech uh, talking about many topics, ranging from regulation right the way through to technology, thinking about what what's the industry has to face today and what its path looks like in the future. And we've just come from the Women in Trading think tank. And uh, first of all, uh, standing room only. Secondly, the gender mix was very, very impressive. But I think one of the things that really strikes me is like, why does this matter? You know, this is naturally an industry that is not known for its altruism, but we're all here to, let's face it, make some money. And uh, diversity drives investment performance. There is so much data that will prove that. But also the industry uh, faces a reputational challenge. When we think about, and every panel has talked about data. Every panel has talked about the need for data scientists. And we face a digital competitive challenge. This is not an industry that young, talented data scientists want to work in. They'll be thinking about going to the likes of Google. They'll be wanting to go to Amazon, maybe going to go to Facebook. But there are, there's plenty of competition for talent, digital talent. So this is why diversity matters, because that talent needs to want to work and be attracted to an industry like this. Well, we had a great discussion in a think tank. It was very practical because one thing is you could talk about this stuff, but actually, what do you do to drive change? We thought about barriers, and barriers sit around everything ranging from uh, equality policies. And it's quite interesting when you think about how do you drive more flexible working is for men to think about flexible working through a slightly different prism. For example, uh, aged parents and the need at the moment of a drop of a hat to have to have a call to be able to run out to, to look after an aged parent. So that's, that's a very, there are very interesting parallels. And if you start with that premise, you might be able to drive change. But also the reason why uh, barriers exist is because it, legacy, history. So leaders at the top clearly want to drive greater diversity. It's the middle management layers who struggle to drive the change and can adapt their heads around change. Some call them the permafrost layers. Some call it, you know, kind of um, the, the, the sticky middle, if you like. And it's very easy to criticize that middle management layer for not uh, driving sufficient change in their organizations. But actually, I have a lot of empathy because if you've been recruited in a certain way, led in a certain way, trained in a certain way, and remunerated in a certain way, um, then of course you adopt certain entrenched behaviors. And I think the focus for diversity and inclusion leaders within the HR functions is how do you help that level of management think differently and change their behavior. So there was a ton of best practice. You know, it's incredible. Everybody I talk to has got, we do this in our organization. These are things we think about, whether that's reverse mentoring, whether that's blind CVs, whether that's even thinking about leadership and how do you recruit people and the order within which you, you, you address certain challenges. So what we're going to do is we're going to capture all of that really good stuff. And what was fascinating was a question from the floor that said, why is this not on the main stage? And we're really hoping it will be next year.